And there it is. Mm. This is not going to be fun. Just back from the off license there, I have to tell you, it was a horrible experience. Going back, seeking that product, that alcohol, it didn't bring the trauma back, but it brought the memory back of going in and buying it. Although I wasn't desperate and sick when I was done, as I was in years gone by. That drink took me to the age of death, to put it bluntly. But I managed to pull back just before that. Um, but I can't forget about it. I can't forget about the effect it had on me. And its name is Frosty Jacks and it's white cider. I always refer to it as industrial cider, not for human consumption. It seems to me that white cider like Frosty Jacks is marketed exclusive, exclusively to those who have no money. I mean, if you have money and you tried it, you'll know not to go back to it again. But if you have no money and you're addicted to it, I mean, you have no choice then, even though you know what's coming. You know the burning trains coming onto the station whenever you have to get off it because getting off it is another story altogether. I've drank every other kind of alcohol, stronger, weaker, when I used to drink, but there's nothing like the horror of white cider coming off it. And when you're on it, you're an absolute lunatic. It's not like vodka or whiskey, they're stronger. But there's just something, something about white cider that sends you absolute crazy and it sends you absolutely to the depths of despair when you're trying to get off it. Thames Research, a charity over in London, said that white cider is worse than crack cocaine. One drinker who they look after said it's like murder in a can. I tell you, it's so bad that in 2009, the makers of White Lightning, Heineken, visited a homeless shelter in London and they seen the absolute chaos that White Cider, that their White Lightning was having on the people who lived in the homeless shelter. Such an effect that it had on them. He immediately went back to Heineken and recommended that it be removed off the shelves in Britain and in Ireland. Now, if Heineken know that this product, product is muck and dangerous, how come the makers of this, the white cider that I used to drink, Frosty Jacks, which is Ashton Manor in Birmingham, how come they don't know that Frosty Jacks white cider is lethal. The answer is they do know. They're more interested in money than people. Alcohol concerns have said that it's more lethal than heroin because of its strength and the amount that you get in a bottle for about four pound. Part of the reason why it's so cheap is because it's taxed very lightly. And the reason why it's taxed very lightly is it because it comes under the term of cider and cider is taxed cheaply because the British government wanted to protect quality cider makers and quality, uh, makers of quality cider wanted to promote that as a business. A lot of rural, com rural companies make quality craft cider so that they, they, to promote that industry they tax it very lightly but white cider comes on to that. So that they are taxed lightly also, which lowers the prices greatly. Uh, I think that white cider should be classified as an industrial cider or something else other than cider because it doesn't resemble cider. It's not golden. It's 
clear with a, a, a small bit of yellowness in it. And the bottle that it comes in, the makers of it try to hide the fact that it doesn't look like cider by, by putting it into, into a blue bottle. Have you ever noticed that? It goes into a blue bottle to hide the fact that it doesn't look like cider. Because it's not cider, it's industrial cider. It should be taxed as so. Another charity in London says the cost of lives of white cider is absolutely appalling. That's strong language. And the delusion and the suffering coming off it. Another large charity over in England said it's synonymous with panic attacks, mental delusions, self-harm, all manner of chaos inside your own head trying to come off this. It's, it's, it's absolutely awful. There's something about it. Just something about white cider. The depression. The very dark thoughts that you can't shake off. The suicidal thoughts, the suicidal ideation. I drank everything and nothing else affected me like white cider. It's absolutely shocking what it does to you trying to come off it. And people should know that before they put it to their mouths. I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm only saying from what, from my own personal experience of this horror. I'm not an expert on it. I can only tell you how I feel about it, the questions that I have about how this is legal and they express how the effect that it has when you're on it and trying to come off it. It's said that white cider shouldn't be removed because vulnerable alcoholics may go for spirits, strong wine, and that's why it's a justification for keeping it in existence. But that's not a, val a valid argument. It's like saying, don't take a knife off a murderer. Let him continue murdering, because if you take the small knife off him, he might go and get a bigger one. I mean, charities know all about this. It's been, in, it's, been it's well documented. It's not just me saying it. No, it's, no, it's not me saying it. It's not just me saying it. It's well documented. Look at it on the internet, white cider. It's everywhere. It's a, it's a serious problem.